Felicte at first didn't want to seem, didn't want to give credit to the old man, and now Nietes manages to gather him into an embrace. They're both from the same province in the Philippines, and Nietes is saying, come on, we're friends. You know we're friends, we're still friends. And Felicte is thinking, well, we used to be friends. Uh, but that wasn't exactly nice. That's not the way you treat your friends. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not the way you treat your elders either. In order, in order for me to um, help for you to better understand this fight, um, that's along the side of my cards, 117, um, 111, uh, Nietes. Um, in order for you to understand this fight and understand what Superfly is on HBO, you would have to understand the 115-pound division, which we're going to talk about. Um, T Street Controversy, this is T Street Controversy Live. The 115 pound division is currently ruled by um, Sir Saket Rungvisai. Number two, in my opinion, in overall good fighters is uh, Jerwin and Cajas, also from the Philippines. Both of these fighters are from the Philippines, meaning um, Nietes and uh, Palicta. Um, they both fought tonight. This was in the LA Forum over in LA. <laughs> Over on uh, HBO, the Superfly 3 card right now, September the 9th, 2018, 12, 16 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the card was actually last night, but I was so busy with the Garcia versus Porter stuff. And with the post-fight press conference, I would have been running all night with this. So right now, we're the second fight into the um, Superfly uh, 3. And if I was to rate all of them so far up to this point, I think that it's safe to say, even though I haven't watched the, um, the uh, Estrada fight yet, which is next after this, is that I feel that Superfly 1 is the best, obviously, when uh, Roman Gonzalez, Chocolatito, I don't like calling him Chocolatito, got knocked out. And then number two, unfortunately, I was sick at that time. And then now you have um, number three, which is rightfully so in regards to entertainment. Number three. To the judges' scorecards, and here are the totals. Robert Hoyle has it 116-112 Palikte. Daniel Sandoval, 118-110 for Nietes. And Judge Max DeLuca has it, 114-114 for a split draw. Look at this guy. Just when I'm telling you that I expect sanity from that judging panel and that we're going to see the expected Nietes decision, we get a draw. It's a bad decision. I don't understand that one bit. It's a bad decision. Uh, it was a 16-12 kind of fight, but for Nietes. Easily. 16-12, 17-11, something like that. Easily. 8-4, 9-3. But I could, see, I could see a range of scores for Palikte giving him between two and four rounds, something like that. Call it, call it nine to three. It was a, a nine judge I very much respect. Fight. Robert Hoyle, who saw it 116, 112 for Belikte. I just don't get it. Copy box numbers in the fight. Yes, look we'll at this. We'll show you what we think is a highly one-sided fight as Donnie Nietes lands 70 more punches by copy box count. It's that activity that we're giving him. That activity that we're giving him. Danny Garcia and Sean Porter, similar situation. Throws 300. Not this bad of a percentage, though. 107 fewer punches by CompuBox count, and therefore lands at a 22% higher percentage. I mean, anybody should have been able to see that Belicte was not landing the vast majority of his shots. Power punches, Yetes lands 23 more, throws 142 fewer, and therefore lands at nearly twice the connect percentage. The precision was visible when Nietes would step inside and land his right hand. Jabs, Nietes lands 47 more. Throws 165 fewer, and therefore lands at nearly five times the connect percentage, or nearly four times the connect percentage. It just doesn't make any mathematical sense, and at the end of the day, you have an unwarranted draw. Nietes has got the promotional stroke in this fight, so I I I I don't know if they're gonna go after um um a Piek Day rematch, but then the the okay this was for the WBO 115 pound title vacant WBO 115 pound title, so one of these guys is gonna be ordered to fight for that title. 
I mean, they're going to be ordered to fight each other again, likely, unless they go to, you know, show Ashida just fought recently, didn't he? Show Ashida just fought this. Here's the HBO lineup right here, if anybody want to see it. Jacobs and Freddie Roach. After that, stay tuned for a replay of 24-7. One week from tonight, it's the rematch. Canelo against Golovkin, without a doubt, the biggest fight of the year. For reaction afterward, look for the next installment of my show, The Fight Game. One week later, it's Real Sports, coming in October. It's the documentary Student Athlete, which examines how athletes generate billions of dollars for their universities, yet remain unpaid. Later that month, World Championship Boxing returns with Daniel Jacobs against Sergei Derevichenko. Well, we're back live in the forum now and getting ready for our main event. I'm standing by with HBO Box. So usually how it works is they were fighting for the vacant, the vacant title, right? Mick Williams Arroyo lost last night, so he's going to be dropped in the ranking. So expect for the WBO to order these guys to likely fight again. Unless one of them declines, then they're going to go to Jose Martinez and then down the line. You see what I'm saying? I really think it would make... I mean, it, it, whoever would have won this fight, I think it would have made sense for Superfly 4 to be Rung Visai versus Estrada. Estrada did win, didn't he? Didn't, did Estrada win? Estrada won. So I'm about to watch that fight now. See how he looked. I think it would, you know, if, if Nietzsche's would have won, right? which is that's who they wanted to win that's who you know i think that's loafer's guy right and um Piete, Piete was um uh, promoted by roy jones if nietes would have won that belt then you could have had ito who fought mcwilliams arroyo on the undercard versus nietes and rung visai estrada two on superfly four so now they can have this rematch as the opener on, you know, like right now, looking at the 100, looking at the 115 pound division, Rung Visai is number one, in my opinion. Jerwin Acasas in Encajas is the money, the big money guy in the division right now. The upcoming, they say he's the new Manny Pacquiao. Also, Andre Ward's getting ready for his cruiserweight return when Usyk moves up to heavyweight. Believe you me, you heard it here. But. Um, Khalid Yafai still working his way up. This is um him right here. Don't be surprised if he ends up. I don't know. I'm gonna do some more research into that before I was gonna see what I was about to say. And that's pretty much it. Let's see how um Estrada does tonight. Um T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. So far, you know, I'm giving um wait, I didn't mean to do that. So far, I'm giving Superfly 3 um, the number 3 in, like, the the trilogy of Superflies right now. But Superfly 4, the way things are looking can be better than Superfly 3 with the way things are looking. And also, if you notice, HBO is investing in the 115-pound division right now. You know, so that's a good thing for HBO, I guess. I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. Please subscribe.